we tend to have a mixture of both industrial sponsored research and as well as government sponsored research. Um, uh, we work through the industrial liaison program to meet with potential sponsors. Um, they'll come, maybe talk to students in the lab, talk with me, and then we'll construct a project together. Um, and uh, then they'll fund maybe a PhD student or a master's student. Um, or if they're interested in shorter term work, they may support just a postdoc for say six months period. Um, that gives us time to learn about an industrial problem, develop a simple experimental protocol that maybe allows us to test it, um, and then develop some data that uh, will help a sponsor design a larger scale process. We work a lot with um, a number of consumer uh, in industries, particularly food industries. Um, so we're interested, for example, in bread dough. Um, uh, you, might, you might ask yourself, um, why does bread feel tacky when it touches the surface? How big can I stretch a sheet of bread? Why, when I roll out my loaf um, or my piece of dough, does it sometimes recoil? Um, uh, that turns out to be very important in, for example, making pizza crust or pizza dough. So, so that's an example of a real-world process where making mechanical measurements is really related to the final property. Um, on maybe uh, other industrial processes, you might be interested in um, how do I control how thick the paint is on the wall before it runs down off the wall. Um, I want a nice uniform coating. I don't want uh, streaks. I don't want uh, blisters in my paint. Um, that's typically done by a paint sprayer, and I think we've all had experiences where the paint sprayer um, puts a coating on a surface that tends to be mottled or bubbly. Um, and that's really not something that we want. So we really want to be able to control how um, a continuous stream of paint leaves a sprayer, breaks up into small droplets, coats a surface. Um, and we're actually interested in both making uniform films, making very smooth, shiny films, but also making really rough films because those really rough textured films come back to this idea of them being super non-wetting or self-cleaning. So actually spraying really rough surfaces tends to be a really good way of making them non-wetting or self-cleaning. So in my experience, the kind of industrial collaboration that works best is one where you have an equal partner on the other side. It's really important that you have someone who's interested in the research, uh, is willing to help guide the research, maybe even act as a, a member of a thesis committee, but really take a vested interest in it. Um, in some sense, if you just send money, um, you don't get the full return of, of what you should get by coming to MIT. By taking an, a really active interest in it, um, it gives us a chance to both do something fundamental here, but be guided by what's of real relevance to someone in industry. That way we're able to navigate potential IP issues very easily because we can help design experiments um, based on input from industry that allows us to study things that are fundamental um, and not completely proprietary, but hopefully relevant enough that they'll help guide an industry towards a proprietary problem. A good example of this might be, for example, if you're interested in studying paint spraying. It seems like a very uh, um, mundane process, but in fact it's critically dependent on this idea of the rheology of the paint. What we put in is what we get out. Um, and by working with a company closely, uh, we can help identify developing model paints that are realistic enough to the real world experience that what we study is relevant to them, but also simple enough um, and general enough that we can actually publish the results uh, and help um, guide uh, um, uh, people towards a, a more fundamental understanding of these kinds of materials. Um, another example might be when we talk about uh, food processing or maybe making bread dough. Uh, bread dough is a remarkably complicated thing with lots of ingredients, but at the end of the day what we're really interested in is how the protein that's inside the bread, um, particularly a material called gluten, uh, controls how much you can stretch the loaf or how much you can make the bread rise. So by identifying those key ingredients together with an industrial sponsor, we can make a model bread, not one you'd want to eat, but actually one that has all the properties of the real thing that allows us to um, study it in fundamental detail, yet provide some guidance to what kinds of materials, what kinds of molecules might you want to put in to have a really good loaf of bread. So I think the two areas that maybe we're really excited about that maybe working with industry would really help us develop something uh, useful is this area of super hydrophobic coatings for glass, particularly for solar cells or photovoltaic applications. Um, we've developed this uh, technology, but what we're really looking for is industrial partners that can help us scale it up. 
It's all very well for us to be able to do it on a 12 inch scale, but if you want to coat photovoltaic devices, you might want to do it on a 12 foot or a, a 120 foot scale. Um, and uh, MIT is extremely good at developing new science and new processes. Industry is extremely good at figuring out how to do that on a re reliable basis. Um, and that's what we're really uh, keen on working with companies through ILP for.